Mr. Happy Living here. I love entrepreneurs and artists and coaches and creatives and people from every walk of life that have discovered their reason for being on this planet. And that's why I love Jay Miller. He's an entrepreneur and a coach too. Jay runs an innovative company called Victory Sports that offers sports performance training, fitness and exercise classes, homeschool PE classes, camps and clinics, and all things sports and recreation. So Jay, welcome to the Something Significant Show, broadcasting from WITV7 in the beautiful Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you, it's good to be here. Awesome. So just tell our audience a little bit about what you're doing these days to leave your mark of significance on the world. So we, um, my wife and I actually run a nonprofit, Victory Sports, and we operate as the global sports school. So we call it GSS. Um, and we focus on training, coaching, um, homeschool PE, like you mentioned, anything sports and recreation. So um, the, the, sometimes people joke about being the, the traveling coach. Um, so we go to people's, uh, you know, towns and cities. And if they have a group of people, sometimes they'll, they'll ask us to run clinics and camps and these homeschool PE classes. And, and so we're, we're traveling all around and um, anything sports and recreation, we use that to allow kids to have a lot of fun. Um, but something that we really like to focus on is the team building aspect. Um, mm -hmm. And so we, we have a motto, um, it's called training beyond the game. Um, so it goes a little bit deeper than just the sports, just the field or the court. Good stuff. So let's take a little journey back in time. What were you doing, uh, say, 10 years ago, back in 2010? So in 2010, um, we, my family and I, we had just moved down here. Uh, we just moved down two years prior, and I was to take a job as the director of, of a sports ministry. The sports ministry was called Soar Sports. It was in Matthews, North Carolina. Um, it's no longer there, but uh, we came down in 2008 to head that up. And so in 2010, I was about two years in, um, and we reached probably on a, on a, uh, in a good year, about 5,000 uh, students and families um, with sports and recreation uh, camps, clinics, same, same, similar to what I'm doing now. Awesome. So you were working for somebody else then and yes. you're working for yourself now, but in the same game. Yes, absolutely. How about back in 2000, 20 years ago? So in 2000, um, I just got married. And, uh, and so I was just out of college, fresh out of college. I graduated in 1999. And so in 2000, um, in February of 2000, I, I got my first job to run a uh, community center. And so I was in charge of uh, renting out the facility. There was a banquet hall, but there was also a gym. And so the church owned it. And the, the vision was to um, build a sports program, sports and rec program. And so that was my first taste of uh, the sports and rec industry. So you've been on the same trajectory. Um, I love this quote by Lionel Messi. And Kyle, you can correct me live if you want. Messi, Messi from Argentina. He says, I start early and I stay late day after day, year after year. It took me 17 years and 114 days to become an overnight success. <laughs> Does that reflect at all your last 20 years, Jay? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. That's, talk, that's, yeah. talk just a little <laughs> bit about that. What, how time, how dreams take time to culminate? Yeah, so um, in 2000, uh, in 2000 um, I, I'm a bit of a visionary. I like to dream big. I like to vision. That's actually something that energizes me. So in 2000, I was ready to, take over the world instantly with uh, sports and recreation and coaching. And, um, and so I, I learned a lot. There, there, were, there were many failures or educations, whatever you want to call them, um, but I learned a lot. And um, really the, the biggest education I got was that things take time. Um, and so 20 years in, and it's funny because now 20 years in, our homeschool PE classes specifically, um, are now at a point where I can say, wow, I feel like we, we figured something out. Um, and it's 20 years later. That's great, but it's, it's, it's learning. It's, it's learning what works, what doesn't work, but also time changes. Look, at how, look at how much technology has changed. Oh yeah. Uh, to what you're doing today, you couldn't, couldn't have envisioned 
20 years mm -hmm. ago. That's, That's right. Very, very interesting, the time traveling. Uh, okay, so my unique definition of significance contains four elements, Jay. It's doing things you love, in places you love, with people you love, and creating something of value to others. So it's doing, but it's also giving. But to be a giver, you need excess capacity in your life. <clears throat> so what are your personal practices, your practices, physical, mental, spiritual, financial, emotional? What do you do to increase your capacity so you can take good care of yourself and have still have more to give to others? Yeah, so, um, and, and that's another lesson that I had to learn over time was um, I didn't, uh, I didn't build in much of a capacity um, early on. And so there were times where I felt burnout or overwhelmed. Um, I've learned over the years, one thing that's very important is um, exercising. So um, we do fitness classes, but apart from that, um, working out with my son, going on walks, um, things that are physically um, if active, but it's, but it's something to kind of relieve some stress, keep, you know, keep your heart rate up. Um, and so that's, that's been very good for me. Um, I also love to play. I have, my son is 16, my daughter's 13, and I have a three, a four-year-old, he just turned four. And so being out in the backyard and being physically active and, and present, that's something that um, is energizing to me. Um, another thing that I, I love to do is I love to learn. And so it, whether it's reading or listening to podcasts or watching videos or, or, um, you know, researching something on the internet, whether it be what I'm involved in or something that I'm not. Um, I think for me, that helps challenge me mentally. Um, I also love to write. And so I, I, don't, I don't do very well at it, <laughs> just keeping up with it. Um, but I love to write. That gives me a chance to express, uh, you know, some thoughts or some visions and uh, just some opinions. And so that, that helps me mentally. Um, faith is a big part of my life, my family's life. So spending time in prayer, um, going to church, um, learning, and, and not just, you know, my, my belief system, um, but I love to learn about others, other people's faith, other people's religious religions. So, you know, physical is a big thing for me. Um, but I, but I love to just kind of decompress mentally doing those, those few things. My wife sings. Um, and so I like to sing with her. Um, so wait a just minute, your wife sings. Yeah. And you like to sing with her, but you didn't say you and my, <laughs> me and my wife sing, I noticed. <laughs> well, um, my wife and I do sing. Uh, she, <laughs> she is a singer. Um, I could carry a tune. <laughs> Very good. So what you said you're, you like to envision the future. What's your, what is your capacity building? What do you do to get away to have the time to think about what you want in life? Yeah, so... Um, so with a four-year-old, it becomes challenging, but my wife and I have figured out a way that each of us can get that alone time or me time. Um, I love to go any, I love outdoors. So if, if I'm at uh, a park, um, if I'm in, just in my backyard under a tree, I, I just love the outdoors. Um, sometimes it becomes my office and I just lift up the, the window shade. Um, but I find a spot and I love to just vision and dream big things that maybe um, you know, I, I question if I can actually attain it. I start to think about those things and dream about those things and vision about those things. And I find my soul becoming energized um, of the, just envisioning um, what could be. Um, but for me, it's really finding that place where I'm, um, it's just peaceful. And to me, that's the outdoors. Mm. All right. What's the big, big dream that's 10 years out that you can't imagine accomplishing or you can kind of, but it's scary. Yeah, yeah. Um, so big, big vision, big dream is um, I would love to have a camp where the camp is is um, based on sports and recreation, but it wouldn't just be for instruction, it'd be for retreats and, and uh, to have groups come in for team building and, and corporate events. And um, basically the camp would be used for any kind of, or to promote a healthy and active lifestyle. Yeah. Um, so it would be sleepover, residential, you know, a little bit of everything. I love that. One of the, I'd like to talk to you after the show. Uh, my family's engaged in a, a situation right now um, that was through struggle to, to get us there, um, but a complete dislocation from 
modern internet civilization mm. to, to get some real deep learning over the course of a very extended period of time. And so this is kind of, you know, because a lot of times bad stuff gets you there, but I would, I could, I could envision, and matter of fact, I did said, I wouldn't mind doing something like that completely yeah. unplugged for six <laughs> months. Wow. <Yeah. laughs> so I'll Absolutely. have to share that with you after the show. Okay. Uh, all right, Jay, well, let's take a commercial break to spread a little love for our awesome sponsors for the entire month of October, Zona Plus and Happy Living. Mr. Happy Living here. I love good things made by good people. That's why I love Zona Plus, the world's first software controlled handheld device that improves cardiovascular health. You're gonna love it too. I use mine almost every day to keep my blood pressure right where it should be. What surprised me though, is this little device has been adding muscle to my biceps too. I walk around all day feeling pumped. Check them out at Zona.com. Use coupon code HAPPY for $50 off. Plus for every order placed during the month of October, I'll donate another $50 to WI TV7. Okay, we're back. And this is the Something Significant Show, and I'm Matt Gersper. Hey, viewers and listeners, do yourself a big health favor and go buy a Zona Plus right after we finish this show. I love mine and use it every day. Well, nearly every day. And I know you're gonna love yours too. Now back to my special guest, Jay Miller. He's the president of Victory Sports USA. So Jay, in my second book, uh, it's called Turning Inspiration Into Action. I explore the big idea that transformations and discovery of purpose often come from something devastating, a uh, terrible illness, a sudden death, something horrible that shakes a life. But I've been fortunate to use a happier way and created transformations in my life with inspiration. So my question is, was there a specific moment or a situation when either devastation or inspiration revealed to you the purpose you were meant to live? That's a great question. Um, so I think it's probably a combination maybe of, of both, maybe a merge of both. Um, so in 1999, I was graduating college, and um, prior to that, since I've been probably out of the womb, but since I've been five, um, played every sport that I could. Uh, you know, fast forward to 1999. At one point in my life, I was on track to be drafted to play baseball, um, and I made some life decisions that um, not not took it from me because they were my choices, but um, that interfered with that. And so, in 1999. Uh, I'm graduating college, and um, I, I remember having a conversation with myself, um, and, and as a side note, I actually woke up in somebody's bathtub um, and didn't know how I got there, um, so I was, it was a pretty dark place in my life, so, that, so the disaster was where my life was, and I remember thinking, if I have all this talent in sports, and I'm not going anywhere, I remember, and at that point, I didn't know who God was, um, and I remember just saying, just if you're up there, take everything from me and give it to somebody that's going somewhere. Um, probably pretty prideful statement, but um, I remember thinking that. I remember having that conversation to, to myself. And then it was probably days later where um, after years and years and years of people sharing things with me and encouraging, um, I, had a, I had an encounter with God. Um, basically just said, listen, I know where my life's going. And so if you're really who you say that you are, prove it. Um, and from that moment, not, you know, it wasn't some big explosion, but from that moment, in, deep inside, I knew uh, why I had spent all those years playing sports or coaching or training, um, and I had all of a sudden this passion just rose up to teach um, and to use everything that I've known now to coach uh, my experiences, to, to raise up, you know, our youth in sports, and I've had the privilege to work with youth at the, and even at the college level, um, so it was at that moment, it was in 1999, where there was a disaster and where my life was. Um, but the inspiration, I had this encounter with God and my faith. Um, and it was at that moment I knew what I was supposed to do. What was the, what was the hardest aspect of that turnaround? 
Um, I think it was, I thought I, um, it was probably pride. I, I mean, I, I wanted to be somewhere and I was so mad at myself because of the decisions I've made. Um, and, and they were, they were pretty terrible decisions that led me, you know, to where my life went. And I just was so angry. Um, and I think the hardest, the most, the, the toughest thing was for me to admit that I messed up, that I made those, that it was me. I made those to own those decisions and kind of accept the outcome of those decisions. That was hard, um, to get by myself and, uh, and then move past to say, okay, I, you know, I, I get it, but I don't have to stay here. Um, and so that was, that was probably the hardest thing was to own that and admit and then actually get up and move on. How long were you in the, the trough? Um, I would, it was probably a good couple days where, um, <laughs> where I just was wrestling and wrestling and wrestling. I mean, it probably was there leading up to that before that, but a good couple days where I didn't want to admit it. I just didn't want to admit it. Um, and I, and, and I, and I preach to people, it's not, you know, it's not how many times you get knocked down the cliche, you know, it's how many times you get, and I didn't want to, <laughs> but. That's awesome. Um, okay, so we've talked about capacity and purpose. And when you combine those two, the sky's the limit, or as I like to say, capacity plus purpose equals happy. Um, it's what I call the happy formula, actually. Uh, but I believe the real magic of life comes from that fourth element of significance. So Jay, tell us how has doing work that creates value to others, you're creating value for others, how does that bring joy and magic into your life? So for me, a, a big thing that I tell my kids is people matter. Um, and I, over the years, I've said people over policy and you know, kind of catchy things I tried to come up with probably weren't very catchy, but uh, people matter. And so when, when I see, when I'm working with a, a youth athlete and I see just the joy and excitement of them getting something, or even just a, a, a kindergartner that's in one of our PE classes and they run up and give you a hug and they yell, Coach Jay, and, um, or, or, or a light comes on and, and a, a student says, oh, I didn't know I could get there. Um, and you're involved in that. That the energy that I feel in, in my soul, how energized I feel, that, that just, that makes me so passionate. Um, I, and it kind of makes you feel like a superhero. Um, and so allowing these people who, especially in our youth sports culture today, where, um, you know, if you're really talented, you get all the, get all the focus. Um, you know, I say, dis, I, I say discover, develop, and refine. So these kids that, you know, their parents go up and say, my kid's never played before. He's not any good. Uh, you know, I kind of, in one ear, out the other, I love to help them discover an ability and then to see that that is, you, you said magic. That is like, that's magic to my soul um, to see that it makes me feel like a superhero. I love it. That's what keeps me going. You know, it's interesting. I also wanted to be a professional athlete and also ended up short. I got cut from three different professional football teams and three different leagues over three years. Mm. And, um, and I was discouraged too, but what I've, what I've learned, like, your ability to impact young, influenceable um, children and athletes as a coach yes. is probably way more prevalent than if you were knocking home runs as a major leaguer and yeah. you were just an idol of theirs. Yeah. <laughs> and actually touch lives and help mold lives. And I think we need that today. Uh, sometimes parents aren't the best coach for their children because their children don't allow it. Um, but then they will allow learning from some other adult. And oftentimes in my life, it was coaches. Absolutely. I have numerous parents come up to me and say, my kid won't listen to me. Can you tell them blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so. right. Or you're benched. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, that's, that's really great. Okay. Um, we got a little extra time for some lightning rounds. And I like this because um, it lets us kind of peer into how you think uh, using words. So the way we do our lightning round is I'm going to read a few of my very favorite quotes, which you haven't seen or heard, <laughs> and then you get to respond telling us what it means to you. 30 awesome. to 45 seconds, and we'll move on to the next. Okay. okay. From John Wooden, 
Sports don't reveal character. I'm sorry, choke. <laughs> Sports don't build character, they reveal it. I love that quote. I love that quote. Um, I think sports and life parallel each other um, and we, and everything. I like to merge sports and life. And so the things that happen on the field, you find out where people are a lot of times in their life by how they um, react to certain situations, deal with certain situations on the, in the athletic arena. So if you, when, when you were in your trough in the bathtub, if you had been your coach, I would what, smack you what advice would you have spanking? Has that been it? Yeah. What would you have said to that young, young version of yourself? Yeah, um, I would have said I would have probably said something along the lines of, um, first thing you have to own the decisions you made. That is, that's true. You have to deal with that. You, you you're allowed to grieve those decisions. However, you can either stay where you're at, and you you see where it's going to lead, or you can get up and you can move forward, you can look to the next thing. Um, and, and as a coach, I'd probably say, listen, I'll, I'll go through it with you. Um, but you definitely need to get up and uh, not stay where you're at. Good advice. Okay, another quote. This one's from Shundru Suzuki. I love this one. You're perfect just as you are, and you could use a little improvement. <laughs> that is awesome. I I've never heard that. that, that is awesome. So. Um, if, if any, I think anyone can learn, I think anyone can grow. I think at the moment that, especially an athlete, but any person at, at the moment that you say, I've arrived, I know everything, I've learned everything I can. I, I think you stop growing and you don't get any better. Um, I, I use Michael Jordan with my son a lot. And I say, Michael Jordan was the best, you know, best on the planet, best basketball player. Um, and yet still worked at being the best. Um, he didn't become the best and then stay there. So he worked harder than everybody else on the, on the yes. court. Yep. Yep. Have you watched this documentary of him these days? He oh, yeah. Still, yeah. You know, we forget about what yeah. that guy did. <laughs> Holy yes. smokes. What a beast. <laughs> yep. All right. So this is one of my own. The more you say no to what you don't want, the more time, energy, and resources you'll have to dedicate to the things that matter most. Yes, I agree. That is a that is a tough lesson for anyone. Um, I had to learn that hard in the beginning because um, I, I wanted to please everybody. Um, you can't please everybody. Um, I've realized over 20 years that things that I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to reach some people. I'm going to miss some people. Um, not everybody's going to be happy. There's going to be enough people that are happy. Um, and, and and so I, I tell people, just come and see. Trust me. Uh, you know. And if 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 I can't do it. I'm much more easy to say no now than I was 20 years ago. Um, and saying no, I found it actually has gotten me to where I want to go easier <laughs> than in the past. I don't feel so overwhelmed. I think it also goes to when you discover your purpose, when you know what you're meant to do in life, it makes it easier to say no to other opportunities that it's just not for you. Yes. And, and there's a lot of pressure from culture that says, well, you know, this is what you're supposed to be doing. You're a 40 year old, you know, man with a fem. You should be doing this. Shouldn't be playing sports. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, right. And, and so I think we get pulled until we discover, you know, why we're really here. And then it becomes easier. Yeah. Uh, this one's one from my past. I don't know who the author is. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch this one. Um, also from my past. I know where it came. It was a, a quote that was given to me when I was yet again trying to make one of those professional football teams. Mm -hmm. And the guy who I was talking with was a coach and he gave me all this advice and no magic pills and this and that. And when I left his office, I was just getting ready to go down to Los Angeles Raider camp. Okay. And when he left, he hands me a little slip of paper and it said, your day belongs to another's dream. Hmm. Yeah, I would say to me, when I hear that, um, I, I tell my son this a lot, but you know, you, you have this moment. And so um, someone else is dreaming about where you're at and you need to make the most of this. Um, so I tell him 100% effort. You can, that's, what, that's all you can control. You can't control the outcome. You can't control if you're going to make it or not make it. You can control what you put in. Um, and so while you're doing that, Outwork everybody, 100%. But while you're doing that, you know, take a second, just remember you're, you're there. 
you're where somebody is hoping to be. Um, you know, and, and my son just scored a hundred, his hundredth goal, his hundredth career soccer goal. Um, and I told him it's great, all the hype, but just remember like all the work you put in there, there are, there are other people that are now thinking, man, I, I can't wait to get there. Um, and think what you can, how you can speak into those, those people's lives if you get the chance. Yeah, very good. Okay, last one, uh, quick response. And as a big, big, big quote from, from Goff, whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. Absolutely. Someone once told me everything big starts small. And um, you have these dreams, and you just got to take that first step. It's just that first step because a lot of times, and I did this early on, a lot of times people say, I'll wait for this, or I'll wait for this in these circumstances. And there's just never going to be the perfect circumstance, I don't think. Um, I've never found it. And so it just becomes, listen, take the step, do it. Um, so if you have this big dream, you have this big vision, take that step. It may be a leap of faith, but, or maybe a small step, take it and then see what happens. Um, because you find out, man, now I can take another step. And then before you know it, it might be 20 years down the road, but before you know it, you, you've done something. Um, so I, I agree with that hundred percent. I love that quote. Awesome. All right. Take us home. We're out of time here. Uh, give me a minute or so uh, and share any parting remarks or comments that you want to leave with our audience. I would say something that has impacted me greatly. Um, and for those of us who are in the position of influencing, especially youth, um, but really any age, but for those of us that are in that position to influence people, there's a huge difference. And I had to learn this. Um, I'm glad I learned it early on, but there's a difference between power and authority. So um, anybody that might be listening that's a coach or an influencer, um, power, that destroys relationships and that forces people to do certain things because of your position or your title. Um, I, I learned, I was fortunate to learn early enough, but I had to learn to, to lead out of authority, out of a place of authority. Um, and authority comes from a place of relationship and it's from investing in relationships um, where the people that you're influencing are willing. Um, and it's, it's, that's where you get, you know, the, the team that's a family. And, um, and so I would encourage everyone that is in a position to influence, um, this has impacted me greatly, is understand the difference between power and authority and let's be influencers um, that, that uh, operate out of a place of authority and relationship. Good stuff. Thank you, Jay. And now, folks, if you can hear my voice and you were inspired by today's show with Coach Jay Miller, please donate what you can to WITV7. They're a 501c3 charity on a mission to educate, empower, and encourage. They do good works with your kindness. Thank you, Jay. I love your spirit and your innovation as an entre entrepreneur by creating many different venues to reach and teach people to live happier and healthier lives with, with your infectious enthusiasm for all things sports and rec. Good stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you, WITV7, for hosting and promoting our show so we can keep reaching ordinary people ready to create extraordinary lives. A special thank you to our sponsors for the entire month of October, Zona Plus and Happy Living. Remember folks, the more you buy, the more I'll donate. So tell your friends to buy a Zona Plus too. It's good for their health. And most especially, thank you viewers and listeners. You'll find links to websites and social media and all things Jay Miller. Find him, friend him, check out his on-demand on sports and recreation resource called iCoach. It's really cool. From me to you, dear friends, I love you and want you to be happy. We do what we do on the Something Significant show to inspire you to live your life to its fullest, to believe as I do that a better self is always possible today and every day for the rest of our lives. So be bold. If you're dreaming about it, it's time to begin it, for it's on that special path, the one to your dream, your unique and distinctive journey. That's where you'll discover the way to make your mark of significance on the world. So till next time, I'm Matt Gersper. You're awesome. And this is the Something Significant Show. And we're out.